one thing to prove that value types are stored on the stack, it hit me that we have an excellent example here. Again, I, I tell you that this will zero out the values, and if you believe me, that's great, but let me actually give you further proof that there is an object here and not a reference when I say struct. If I um, come here, let me just get rid of the new fraction, which essentially zeroes out the values, and I say my frac dot numerator. I should probably make these public, do an alt drag down, type public like so. My frac dot numerator gets five. My frac dot denominator gets thirteen. Alright, well if I don't have an object then this is not legal. The compiler will catch it and say, hey you're uh, using a reference without initializing it. All right. In fact, actually if I watch I'll change this from struct to class. And hello, red squiggly. It's saying, hey, um, my fract, it's, you haven't assigned to it yet. All right? And by assigned by assign to it, it means, hey, go make that object out on the heap. All right? Now that I do new, uh, we're fine. But if I get rid of all this, and we get the red squiggly back, and I change to struct, the red squiggly will go away because it's saying, hey, there is an object. Oh, and you're initializing it. Very good. Okay, so one other kind of weird thing, if I console right line in here my frac dot numerator uh, that's fine I actually kind of don't feel like like this this should be legal because I can't say console right line my frac dot denominator right the compiler is smart enough to realize hey you're using denominator which is a member of this object and you haven't initialized it yet but I've initialized part of it I'm able to use part of it but not until I initialize this part of it can I actually use that part of it now watch this let's give this struct a function public void I don't know reduce right fractions can reduce can they not and you know pretend there's some implementation in there let me come in here and just say we'll initialize I think we're done with these for now my frac dot numerator oops it's five. Well, let me say my frac dot uh, reduce like so. Well, notice the presence of the red squiggly and says, "Hey, um, you're trying to call a function on something that you haven't really initialized yet." So this kind of, I think it's kind of interesting or hypocritical because I'm able to console right line numerator my frac dot numerator, and I guess I get why they allowed that because I did initialize that part of the object, but here I'm actually using the object, but then here I can't really use the object until the entire thing is initialized. Let me control L, control V that down there, and you'll see we, we don't get any errors. I can build, you can see the build succeeded. So anyway, I, an object must be fully initialized before you use it, and that was the case down here. It's even though reduce, the compiler could do some static analysis, which is a fancy way of saying it could look at the code in here and decide, yeah, we're not using the numerator denominator, so let me call reduce whenever I want to. But that's not the rule. The compiler just says, hey, you know, if perchance reduce, I wanted to change this implementation of reduce to use numerator and denominator, well, then that would cause any code out here to break. So we're going to force you to fully initialize this struct instance before you use it. So th th obviously the easiest way of doing that is just new fraction and that will zero out all the data members sitting on the on the stack. Now we get a blue squiggly. Oh, well, that's interesting. Let's build. Oh, okay. Blue squiggly gone. IntelliSense satisfied. So there you go. Uh, partial initialization, full initialization, and you can't call a function unless you're fully initialized, but you can write out data members that you have partially initialized inside of a struct.